How come Rajasthan is flooded and Assam and Meghalaya are running dry? Why is India's monsoon broken? Is this a new climate warning in front of us? This year's monsoon has defied its usual pattern. Traditionally dry states like Rajasthan are getting rainfall in abundance, whereas states like Meghalaya are gasping for rain. Is this just bad luck or there is a climate warning or a pattern that we need to understand? Hello everyone, welcome to Fash News. My name is Shubhangi Singh and today we are going to talk about that why the rainfall pattern, the monsoon pattern has changed for 2025. What are the reasons behind it? What is causing it? And what are the consequences that we are looking at? So when we talk about the monsoon pattern, we find that the, the traditional monsoon pattern has gone rogue this time and the logic behind that usually we used to see, for example, if we look at states such as Rajasthan, which are considered traditionally dry state, this year they have had 92% surplus in terms of rainfall, whereas states such as Assam and Meghalaya, which are known for the high amount of rainfall, they are seeing a deficit. There is deficit which is seen not just in Assam, Meghalaya, but in Bihar, West Bengal, Meghalaya, Manipur, Nagaland, Arunachal Pradesh. And when we talk about surplus, Central India and Western India, which is traditionally known comparatively drier in terms of monsoon, is on the plus side, where we see Rajasthan, 92% surplus, Madhya Pradesh, 54% surplus, Odisha, 15%, Jharkhand, 53%. And then we have Himachal Pradesh and Haryana respectively at 5 and 11. Now, this, these two maps are the clear representation of the fact that I am talking that how monsoon has at present defied its regular pattern. But the question that actually lies here is why is this happening? Are we able to understand the causes behind it? So now we are going to look into the causes that are the reason for this existence of pattern in terms of monsoon. If we look into the causes, the first cause that comes in front of us is basically the enhanced moisture capacity. Now, how is the moisture capacity being enhanced? What has exactly changed? So basically for that, we need to understand something that is known as clausius clapeyron effect. So basically, by the understanding of this effect, let me explain this. It basically means that if there is rise of 1 degree Celsius, that means every 1 degree Celsius rise in temperature gives the capacity to atmosphere to hold more of water vapor and here in case is the 7%. So similarly, if we have to simply if we have to understand, that means higher CO2 or greenhouse gases mean higher temperatures and by this very same effect it also mean higher water holding capacity which is created. So now more water vapor is being created and this fuels the intense localized downpours that we are seeing. So this is the responsible reason where we are seeing the downpour or rainfall that is happening. It is happening in a very localized region because of enhancement of temperature. And now if you will look at the heat temperature distribution across our nation, it is mostly in central India because of continentality. Because of which we are seeing fewer but extreme rainfall events and the surplus that we are talking about in some pockets and similar reason deficit in some pockets. Let us look at the next cause that we are going to talk about. Second is the southward shift of the monsoon trough. So when we talk about the monsoon trough, it basically acts as a track because that track is followed by the moisture laden winds which are coming through the Arabian Sea branch and the Bay of Bengal branch. So if we look at this diagram, you will find that the usual location of the monsoon trough is here. But this year we have found that almost change of 200 southward movement of the monsoon trough has been seen which brings the central and western India in the main region where these winds will bring in moisture. That is why we are finding stronger Arabian Sea branch 
which is facilitating more rainfall in central as well as western India and that is why we are seeing 92% extra rainfall in Rajasthan as compared to normal, Gujarat 35% above normal and the reason here we find is the monsoon trough. Now let us look at another cause that we which is responsible for this very pattern. The next one is neutral ENSO and subtle IOD influence. Now what are these? So if we talk about ENSO, it is basically El Nino Southern Oscillation. And when we are talking about El Nino Southern Oscillation, we include El Nino and La Nina. At this point of time, both of these effects are not being dominated. So they are not into play. And if neither of these are into play, that means a usual monsoon will be seen, right? The usual monsoon, that means the northeastern part gets the heavy rainfall, central parts gets average rainfall and the drier parts are seen on the western side. But there is another phenomena that is IOD, Indian Ocean Dipole. When we are talking about Indian Ocean Dipole, it is basically a phenomena where we see constant change of temperatures between Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea and depends which is the warmer side and which is the comparatively colder side. So when we are talking about positive IOD, that is Indian Ocean Dipole, it means better monsoons, stronger monsoons. But when we are talking about negative IOD, it means less than usual rainfall will be seen. So as of now, we are finding there is weak positive Indian Ocean Dipole. However, it is predicted that by September, this will turn negative. That means late season rainfall will not be seen. And this will also cause the change that we are talking about. Now moving to the next cause. As of now, we have understood three main causes. First, the temperature changes that we are seeing because of the climate change. Second, we have talked about monsoon trough, its southward movement. Now we have talked about phenomena such as El Nino, La Nina and Indian Ocean Dipole. Now the fourth thing that we are seeing that when we are talking about this 2025 monsoon, we are considering this as an isolated event as if it has never happened. But if we look at the data that is available to us, we will find that this has been a recurring pattern in recent years because this is the fifth consecutive year season that we are seeing for Meghalaya, Assam and Tripura where there has been below normal monsoon rainfall. And for specifically these regions, the underlying reasons for this region is the fact that Warming has been induced because of the change in Bay of Bengal convection patterns. Furthermore, in these regions, we are also finding land use changes which are basically deforestation, urban extension, which has disrupted the local circulation that used to take place in this region. So another factor that has been added that Northeast specifically has seen this decline for past five consecutive years and they have region specific reasons associated as well. Now moving to the last factor in here, that is the land sea thermal contrast. So when we are talking about the monsoon driver, the difference of temperature between land and sea is the major factor. So let us, if we are talking about a region, land region where we see temperature is going up, it will lead to creation of low pressure. C which takes more time in heating up, it will see presence of high pressure and we know wind travel from high pressure to low pressure, it will carry moisture with it. And this is the most fundamental concept which is involved with working of Indian monsoon. So in this, the differential heating of the Indian subcontinent versus to the adjacent ocean plays a big role. And what we have seen in recent times that the summer land temperatures, that means the low pressure that we are talking about, it has comparatively plateaued relative to the oceans. So if the difference between the temperatures would not be such or the pressure difference would not be such, that will weaken the onshore flow, basically the movement of moisture, especially for the northeastern rainfall that we are seeing. So in this situation, if the temperatures in Bay of Bengal 
are not comparatively lesser if Bay of Bengal is heating equally much and low pressure is seen in the land area, then the movement that flows from in there, the inflow that we will see, it will also gradually diminish. So here we have highlighted all the possible factors because of which we are seeing change of the image, especially in terms of monsoon and the rate of rainfall that was seen in the monsoon period. But the question is what are the consequences of it? Now let us look into the consequences of the change of rainfall that we are talking for the traditionally dry states and traditionally comparatively wet states. So when we talk about the consequences, the first thing that we will see that agriculture will suffer across the region because these regions will plan the agriculture, their sowing, plantation as per the regular pattern. As we see in Bihar where there has been a difference of 43 percent including other states also can be taken in the similar context that they have stalled their kharif sowing, they will take their kharif sowing later and there are certain regions where seeing flash floods which has damaged crops and rural livelihoods. I am talking about regions such as Rajasthan. So this will lead to a situation where food production will be hampered and other dimensions related to economy for example where the output in terms of mining is affected because of flooding in regions like Odisha and Jharkhand where coal and mineral productions because the mining belts are flooded they have been paused. Furthermore we are seeing that IIP has hit 10 month low in the last to last month because the mining and power output has taken a decent fall. Furthermore, urban and water infrastructure stress has been seen. Because of intense rain, the frequent urban floods are being seen which are already further burdening the drainage systems which are not serving their actual purpose. Furthermore, the water deficit in northeastern region clubbed with demand surge that is seen in dry regions, it is basically all of this an indicator of water crisis, disaster management crisis and it calls for, it highlights the need of proper planning, assessment and understanding of not just monsoon, if it takes a different turn what can be planned better for it. Now my question to you is what are the precautions do you think or what are the steps that government should take or you can also highlight the steps that government has taken to address situations like these. Now that was all from my side. Thank you so much.